let's let's talk about benefits for writers because there's going to be people watching this who go, I want to do this for fun and I want to do this for profit and sure. I want to do this for marketing. So why should a writer care? Well, first of all, we've done something that's really cool that hopefully reduces the barrier of your entry getting into the games industry. Games, especially on mobile and tablet, which our stories publish to. So all of the content currently is published to One More Story Games via Story Worlds, and we have that on Facebook, Android, uh, tablets, and, and phones, and pretty soon it'll be also on your iPads and your iPhones. Lots more platforms coming soon. Lots more platforms like Apple TV and, and stuff like that. So we take Contest. care of those publishing aspects for you. And in the end, you just use Story Stylus, and then you hit publish. It gets reviewed, and then it goes out onto our marketplace. Yeah. So that gives you an opportunity to get into the game space, hopefully to engage new readers. So let's say, let's say we have a hundred published games by the end of 2016. You're also, the authors from other games are going to be bringing in their audience and they're going to be exposed to your work and so on and so on. So your audience has now grown. Not only that, our job as One More Story Games is to find the really, the, the big names. So for example, we're working with number one New York Times bestselling author Charlene Harris. Charlene has sold over 36 million novels. And most people would know her from her Suki Stackhouse series that HBO has adapted into True Blood. And? And she also has a series that's currently filming for the Hallmark Channel based on her Aurora Tea Garden series. And, and? she also has a TV <laughs> show coming out this fall based on her Midnight Texas series. Which is a big pilot for... Yes. So we're working with Charlene and a number of narrative designers to, to really make her games the show piece, but to attract her, you know, two, three, four million fans that are going to come and play, they need other content to play while they're Absolutely. there. So we're hoping to entice people to work with us over the summer and into the fall to create really great content so that it's published and ready to go when we attract her on. And we also have some other really big people lined up as well that we can't talk about. But, you know, this is just the beginning of the the new space of ebook meets video game we really this is something that we're very passionate about i think you can tell that we're pretty passionate about it um just so that I, we are sure that lisa did get her question answered for total story words can you say what about a half an hour of gameplay have we found about twenty thousand words or so is no that... i would say that hard vacuum lullaby clocks in at about half an hour of gameplay and it's roughly, I think Sutherland said it was in the neighborhood of 30,000 words. Okay. There's a bit of branching, strong branching that goes there. But, yeah, I think with 20,000, 30,000 words, it... And you can use existing content that you already have. Um, you know, if this is something that you'd want to just poke around with. You know, I'm, I'm always happy, uh, allowing my schedule, of course... But I'm always happy to take the time to to talk to people and brainstorm and help them plan out their game. So I'm going to send you the PDF for the story flow so you can start thinking about what does my world look like? Is it linear? Is it just, is it not, does it nonstop branching? Is it more of a cluster? Are there, what are the requirements to progress in the is story? Is it like a voyage or a quest or something like that? I mean, that's, and it's adaptable for branching for any of those situations. Yeah. Um, how, any more? Do we have you some can, more questions? Let's open it up to some questions. The other thing just for strengths for writers is that you can always cross promote your works through our software. So we have links back to your Amazon page, your Goodreads page. You know, if you have a website where you're, you, you have your content or your, your story will put up there, then that's possible to, uh, to do that as well so we have a question yes Rebecca wants to know can you allow a dice rolling plot device where the character gets a seemingly random move hmm yes there you go there's the answer to that one there is a randomization system in the scripting engine and then based on what die you roll it literally is I believe the call is like random die roll and then you specify how many dice you want to roll 
and what side the dice are. Yes, I am a D and D geek at heart. So, <laughs> and then you get a number back from that, and then you can say, okay, well, Mrs. White then goes to the study or the hall or whatever. See, I didn't even know this about our own software. Oh. Okay, so let me tell you about some of the cool, geeky things in our software that I'm really quite proud of. But and please what, ask questions. Yes, before continue she, to ask yes. questions. <laughs> and, you know, what makes us different from other game software that is out there? For example, Blair is working on a feature that allows you to create sequels or serialize your game content. So say you have a world. I'll, I'll use her an example of a game that's coming out next month. So there's a man in Tilsonburg, his name is Daniel Wilkins, and he's creating, Tilsonburg is sort of like his home, his hometown, it is his hometown, but it's also the hometown in his story. So he has all of these different characters that are in the story, and all of these different locations are in the story. Well, in his first game, which I believe is called From the Garden to the Grave, there are deaths that happen. And but there are activities and in, uh, interactions that you have with some of the characters within the game that when in game two, those actions that you took in game one can Very be old. remembered and carried forward into game two. So if you had a really rude altercation with someone or you became best friends with someone, they may be more inclined to do something with you or for you. Um, so we really and want... The, the idea is there that all of the bricks you created in that first story carry over to that second story. So once you've got your basic world designed, it becomes easier to tell stories in that world for, for later games. Yeah, so for uh, the there's a gentleman that's doing a 19th century supernatural thriller. Next month, the first portion of that comes out, and then every month after that, he's going to be releasing a short episodic game based on that same world and the same characters. So that's something. For those of you that are multilingual, there's also an element to Story Stylist that allows you to create the content in multiple language tracks. So a player can go in and they'll see the little, it'll say English, French, Spanish, and they can play according to the language that they would like to play. So it's definitely advantageous to those of you who are multilingual or know somebody who's willing to translate for you. We really want to release this to a global market. So that's, yes. there's a question down below. Can you integrate GPS or other real life mapping inputs? Yes, but not right now. That's coming soon. Yeah, that. The, <laughs> I mean, I can foresee doing a storytelling GPS kind of a geocaching kind of a game, possibly. But you got to remember that what's easy for you to be able to code to say, yes, you play my game by going to Vancouver, New York, Cairo, Paris. Um, it's possible. Just remember sort of what are the realistic constraints for... Probably in the next, definitely by the end of this year, you would be able to create your own adventure game set in one city. So you'll be able so to go visit, visit a location. Yeah. You can actually get some kind of code and input it into the game. And so now you're getting an extra layer of interactivity and multi-platform storytelling. Yeah. Yes, so Ingress. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You got it, yeah. So the other thing but is... But more story-driven in that sense, mm -hmm. so that it really is... You have to go someplace to... And it checks to see that you're in that location with a certain error margin, so... Yes. Yeah. Let's see what are some of the other cool things. So we encourage storytellers to think about their story. Does it have to be 3D illustration? No, that's why we built Story Stylus. Really, first and foremost, needs to be the, the storytelling. You could use photographs. You could even use stuff that's in the Creative Commons. You don't have any photographs of your own. Find stuff that's in the Creative Commons. We have an attribution system. So you can actually just tag and identify that this photo came from this location. Um, or this photographer. Or this photographer. And then you can link back to their website so that you're helping to promote their work as well. Yeah. Uh, you can use, we have some people, like for example, with mandatory upgrade, some of the photos or some of the illustrations were done digitally, and then some of them were done by sketching and then scanning them in and then uploading them into the game. 
There are some really great resources that you'll soon see on StoryStylist.com when it launches later this week where it's here are some really great websites for inexpensive sound effects. You can buy a sound effect for like a dollar. Or even historical photos. And all of that seems to be free right now in the digital commons. For, for people who are doing vintage stuff, you're, you're so lucky. Because uh, just recently I saw an entire treasure trove of vintage New York maps and vintage Vancouver maps and vintage Toronto maps. So we're building that resource library for you to create that content. Yeah. For those of you that are doing the sci-fi stuff, uh, yeah, you're probably going to need to, <laughs> there's no, there's no archival material there. There's no freesound.org. Thank well, you. If you've Shane, got a way to great. get it. We want to talk to you. So, <clears throat> so I, I hope that, you know, after sort of getting a general sense of stuff that you'll go and play at least three of our games. Even if you only play the first five or 10 minutes of each game, you'll get to see that the art style is different, that the gameplay is different. For example, in Sky Carver, Sky Carver is about 10 pages of reading. It's not huge pages. I'd call them like three paragraphs, maybe two paragraphs a page before you even get to an interactivity component. Whereas some of the others is maybe one blurb and then you're off to the races. So just below there, yep. Kate makes a very good point that that vintage maps could have some copyrights on them. But usually what we find, Kate, is that it's just an attribution copyright. So if you just make mention of the, the original work or the source of the work that in most cases that tends to be enough. And that's what our attribution system yes. allows you to do. You can comment to give actual reference if you got, grab an image from wikipedia they give you all of those codes that you can enter in right into our system and and it's very important to us that when users are so we have what's called the play wall and then the paywall so if somebody came along and created content we don't we don't see all the content there's a flagging system so that if it's inappropriate people can flag it we'll then go and review it and if it's inappropriate we'll take it down but for the most part, everybody will go right through to the play wall where they can share that and, and, you know, go to your heart's delight. We still ask that people who are publishing content to the play wall that they have respected the copyrights because we want to protect ourselves as a company, but we also want you to protect yourself as a content creator. Yes. So if it's Creative Commons and it requires attribution, there's the attribution link. Some is Creative Commons and requires no attribution. So please respect other people's copyrights first and foremost. And for those of you that are going to be, you know, part of the awesome published on the paywall side of things, we will definitely be doing like reverse image sources to make sure that we have done our due diligence and that your work is original and that we've bug tested it and made sure that it's fun. This isn't censorship in that way. I mean, we're not looking, honestly, we want more content up there, but we want to make sure that our players are rewarded for, you know, that the content's all playable. And yep. we, we want to help you with that too. And yeah. also, I think the number one thing that I want to convey to people is, yes, it's about storytelling. I would like the writers to treat One More Story Games like a professional publisher in that you've already had your material edited and proofread and things like that Please. it seems very common sense but you would be surprised at how much time it can be because if we're going to publish something we have to make sure we play every iteration of the game what happens is when we do that and and we're also copy editing and proofing we then have to go back through to make sure that everything still lines up so it might slow down your work to get out there yes. if you know, or we might just straight up refuse it and say you need to find a, a copy editor because maybe we're, we can help you with that. Yeah, I mean, that's... so we'll have all those resources. Can you export all text for proofreading? Yes.